Welcome to another episode of the Dentology Podcast, where we discuss the business of dentistry. In this podcast series, we'll be discussing all the non-clinical aspects of dentistry, from goodwill values, finance, marketing, how to buy and sell a dental practice mindset, through to where you can invest your money in team management issues. My name is Andy Acton, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris Strevens. Let's jump straight into it. So welcome to our next episode of Dentology, the Business of Dentists podcast. And today we're joined by James Martin. James, a dentist, a Bitcoin enthusiast, and also runs the Dentist to Invest Facebook group and podcast. Um, I feel like I'm returning the favour because it was James who invited me back on his podcast back in 2020. So welcome, James. How are you? Andrew, thank you so much for having me. I am absolutely tremendous today, and it is my pleasure to appear on your podcast and return the favor to you. It's the other way around, my friend, because you appeared on mine way back in the day, twice actually now, from memory. I did, I did, yeah. Before we get, I mean, we want to talk about the education of money today. You know, that's the thing that I think so many dentists struggle with. You know, very often they, they've got money, but whether they're necessarily employing that money and using that money as wisely as possible, we, we'll, we can dig into. But before we mm. get to your, your passion, which is a money bit, um, uh, what was your pathway into dentistry? Is, is there a long line of Martins in, in dentistry? Mm. Is, this, is this something that's happened through the heritage or were you the first one in? Mm, well, in my immediate family, I would be the first in the dynasty, I suppose, because well, a potential dynasty uh, depends oh, on what my kids get up to. Um, Are you I, watching uh, that shit, that show, Succession? Or yeah, I'm not, I'm not a, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. If they gravitate towards it, then all is well for them. I'll certainly do my, my best to... Dentistry is not without its foibles, as we all know, and I certainly won't paint a picture that it's absolute, an absolute utopia to them. I'll just let them know how it is. And if they want to go down the path of dentistry, then fair play to them. But to answer your question, I am the first in my immediate family. However, I have got a cousin who is a dentist and she was the one who was very much in my ear, a little bit like that, around about my A-levels time, who made me think about dentistry and certainly put it in my, my, uh, my vision between my blinkers and made me focus on it. And really it was more that I was interested in the... Hang on, is there something in the background? No, no, you're good. We're, we're okay. Uh, sorry, I just thought I thought you'd get some feedback. Let me just, I've actually got this microphone. I think it's picking up your, when you move your hands around, Andrew, It might. I think it's picking up your shirt. Oh, right, possibly. Okay. I thought it was that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But um, let me just switch this microphone. Sorry, I was in full flow there and then I thought someone was talking. So I didn't want to talk <laughs> over the top of yeah. That's what it was. I thought I was being rude, so I stopped. <laughs> Should we do that again? Should we do that again? Yeah, go on and yeah, let's, fine. Let's yeah. do it again. Yeah. I, I was literally just like that, and then I thought, hang on. Your your microphone keeps cutting out as well. Yeah. Is is it better? Is this better now? Yeah, yeah that's clearer. Yeah, that's better. That's much clearer. Yeah. Well, here's what I can, because I actually realized as well, I plugged my microphone in. And then I realized it hadn't actually connected. So I've got this really dodgy one that's linked to my, my webcam and the audio quality is not so good. Let me, sorry about this, right? Let sorry. me also just, let me do one other thing and then I'll get this intro. <clears throat> okay, you notice the internet is flawless now from this point onwards. I've just switched it to my other one. Perfect, right. okay. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll start again. Want me to start, do me to ask? Let's answer that question again. The, the dynasty of dentists, yeah. and then the, that was all there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I'll go back to the um, before we get into the money side of things, and I'll ask the question again. Yeah. All right. If that's all right with you, yeah, yeah. I see no we'll problem at all. Well, we've got our housekeeping under control. Cool. Yeah. All no right. problem at all. So before we get into the uh, the money side of things, James, I know you're you're passionate about. Um, uh, what was your pathway into dentistry? Yeah. Is there a long line of Martins that have you know trodden this dentistry path before you? Are you a trailblazer? <laughs> the second one, a bit of a trailblazer. A bit of a trailblazer. My dad is a farmer and my mom is a nurse. So right. yeah, dentistry was something that I just found my way into. It was never something, I never grew up, it was never like I had these 
grand visions of my calling to be a dentistry when I was a <laughs> young boy. I, it was something that I suppose I kind of fell into. She was the one who was in my ear a little bit saying, hmm, perhaps you should think about this. It's a nice job. You'll get to apply your love of science and maths. And uh, yeah, you should think about it. And around about that age, you don't really, hmm. For James. me, it, I needed a direction rather than, you know, knowing exactly yeah. what that best direction was. And I just kind of went for it. Yeah. Did she, uh, when she was nibbling in your ear, did she mention money at all? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, as far as dentistry goes, yeah. So obviously, naturally, there's a good remuneration there. But the main thing for me was the fact that it was something science based, and also there's a massive people side to it because mm. that is something that I love too. And as well as that, nobody wants to do night shifts as a doctor, so that was definitely a factor <laughs> in my decision. <laughs> hats off, respect any doctors who are listening. Like absolutely, hats off to them. I just wanted the nine to five personally and also getting to know my patients. Mm. But also, I think it's hard, isn't it, for young people? You, know, you were saying that you know, you're at GCSE A-level stage and you're having to make these life decisions oh, yeah. about you know, what degree you're going to commit to, which then puts you on a, a minimum five-year learning path for something that you're not even sure is, is the right thing that you're going to, going to be going for. And you know, you just think those are big decisions that you're having to make as a, as a young person. And, and, you know, you had a, a cousin who was able to kind of, you know, explain to you a bit more about it. But for lots of people, that that's quite a, an overwhelming situation to mm, be in, isn't definitely. it? 110%. And here's the thing. So many dentists out there feel stuck. They feel like that decision they made when they were 17, 18, 19, whatever, is something that they regret. And let's and that's a shame, just isn't say it? that, that is a shame. some of the experiences over the it's a real shame, particularly the ones that just really, really don't enjoy mm -hmm. it or the job was just not what they'd envisaged, envisaged at all before they set out. Because I do believe that the job itself versus what they teach you in uni is quite disparate, those two mm -hmm. experiences. And definitely because of that, because it's so different, there will be some people that feel like it is not necessarily for them living it when they get out to the real world and they begin to practice dentistry. But here's the thing, we'll maybe get into this a little bit later. Some of the experiences that I've had over the last 13 months, some people who are listening to me and Andrew, where we know each other from, will know me from Dentistry Invest, my Facebook group, my online community. And some of the people that I've met through that over these last 12, 13 months has made me see that once upon a time, I felt like that a little bit in dentistry. And though I never hated it, I did feel, I did feel indentured to it. I did feel mm. like I was, as far as another career option would have went, I did feel like I was limited. And there'll be lots of people listening to this who are dentists who feel like that. But what I will say on that one is, life is not how you think it is. The peop there are people out there that will help you if you want to get out. It's mm. just about opening the door. Yeah when it's made mm. available to you. Absolutely. And I promise, I promise, I promise, if the only thing that is holding you back is the fact that you don't think you're gonna earn as well doing another job, do not let that be a decision. Mm. This is your life, you've got mm. one opportunity, you gotta go out there, you gotta enjoy it, you know? There's no, second, there's no second shots, and before you know it, it can be 30 years down the line doing something you dislike. That to me is uh, not yeah. where I'd wanna be. There'll be lots of people out there who that resonates with. That resonates with us in a way, James, because we were both bankers. And one of the things that when we bought Frank Tone Associates over 20 years ago was one of the things that we realised was that banks are really good at making you uh, not appreciate the transferable skills mm -hmm. that you have. And you therefore think you're sort of stuck in this rut but actually, in re the amount of time you spend, whether it be people, the training, those skills are transferable elsewhere. But you sort of, as you say, you have to stand back yeah. and think, hmm, OK, what else can I do? And that's that's where you make change. That's why we bought Frank Taylor Associates. And it's heartbreaking. When, 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 we, when we talk to people who may have owned a dental practice for you know, 20, 30 years and, you know, there's just kind of abject disappointment in their voice that it's not been the fulfilling career that they hope for that that's a shame thankfully it's rare M most people when they get to the end of the career the, the thing that they say is, is i really enjoy dentistry i really enjoy the interaction with patients <laughs> and the communication bit the bit that i don't like is the business bit is the running that tends <laughs> the to be running the, a practice the, the bit. Theme. Um, but but with yourself, James, you, know, yeah. you mentioned your, your 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 group. There's obviously an entrepreneurial flair mm. within you because you started this this Facebook group and you've got a podcast with dentists to invest. Was there 
Was there a particular event in your life where you thought, I need to do this, I, I need to create this group? Because this yeah. group now has got 5,000 people in it. It's a proper community. Yeah. You know, It's kind of like the go-to place within the dental world for financial information. That's how I see it. And that podcast ranking is going up, isn't it? I, I keep seeing it. You know, Will we get to number one? Or I think we were one number one, weren't you, at one time? And I think it's, it's great to, that that building of of communities, you say, in a relatively short time. Yeah. So was there, was there a spark? Was there something that happened that you thought, I need to do this? Thanks so much for that. I am going to answer that question, but can I just chuck one tiny thing on top of what you were saying earlier, which ties into what I'm about to say. Dentists who want to get out of dentistry, biggest transferable skill, passion. Yeah. Biggest transferable <laughs> skill. If you can take that energy, that energy that you have for dentistry and focus it into something else, that is even the sheer fact that you have passion and energy in itself is actually quite unique in the real world, okay? So if you literally just taking that passion and energy that you once had for dentistry, channel it into something else, where there's a will, there's a way, and that's when doors open. And that also ties into what I'm about to say as well, because for me, I never, let me set the record straight. I never, I do, I do like dentistry. For me, it was always about 7.5, 8 out of 10. If I had to give it a score out of 10, it was 7.5, 8 out of 10, you know? But there was lots of hours and days and weeks and months spent studying dentistry, like reading textbooks, going above and beyond. And that in itself, that alongside my dual passion of finance and crypto, it was that energy that I took from the dental world and put it in the finance world that made Dentists Who Invest what it is, you know? And like, look at, I'm, I'm proud, just as you said, that, you know, your words, you say, this is the go-to place for dentists who are interested in finance. And you yeah. know what? When I hear that, that really uplifts me. I think that's tremendous because that's not me saying that. That's other people's perceptions of it, you know? And that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And yeah, just like I said, there's a bit of a parallel there between how some dentists are feeling and maybe just taking that, like taking, if they can just uplift themselves to get themselves in that energetic state, state, that's when I believe things will happen. To answer your question, entrepreneurial streak, I think I get it from my dad. He runs a Christmas tree business, okay? <laughs> you know, when you get Christmas trees and you always think, you've probably never thought, where do Christmas trees come from? <laughs> My dad and his friends, they all go Christmas trees, okay? There's a bit of a story behind that. And he's recently <laughs> left his job to be a full-time Christmas tree. I, is entrepreneur the word? Is farmer the word? Is, I don't know, forestry manager the word? I, I really don't know, but that's what he does, and that's his business now. And definitely, um, yeah, a little bit. I see, I think that that's rubbed off on myself. I also used to sell knockoff CDs in school, so I used to be that guy. Uh, so there was a little bit of that. <laughs> so there must be something up there. So there must be something up there. I've, I've left the life of Pirate CD Merchant behind me, just for the record. Uh, that's handy to know. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to see whether you've had the, the, the latest Duran Duran. Yeah. I didn't know if you had like a little suitcase with Duran Duran or, <laughs> or Wham that's or something a, like that. That's, that's, you that's, know very, that's a, a similar call. Richard Branson-esque, isn't it? it? Is, isn't it? Yeah. Standing in a telephone box or something, <laughs> making phone calls, selling records or something. Wasn't that how he started? <laughs> Do you know what? Richard Branson, I remember him saying something about when Cindy Lauper came out, his business was on its knees and Cindy Lauper's time after time came out and apparently they saved Virgin Records because it sold so many records. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So I remember the killer's hot fuzz coming out and I remember it was payday for me. It must, I think I made like 30 quid in a week, which was a fortune oh, back then. When they were one pound a CD, that was a lot of money. Look at that, the halcyon days. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you put it in, in Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, oh, that would have been the smart move. Goodness yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Like that that it? <laughs> back then, back then. Oh, wow. So yeah, on your, on your Facebook group, then, on James, so on, on your Facebook group, I'm, I'm interested from the kind of the management of it because you're really active on the group and it's, it's a big group. There's a lot of people. There's lots of posting. Mm. So as the kind of the admin of a group like that, how do you walk the fine line between allowing expression and allowing comments 
against censoring stuff because obviously I know people are very good at, at, at passing comments and saying this is not financial advice don't take this advice do your own research but when you're responsible for that group that kind of line between letting people express themselves and, and it go down a path and become interesting but also being the admin and pulling it back and kind of taking control how, what kind of what's your, your rule of thumb for how you manage that? Really insightful question and by and large, for the record, people are very well behaved and respectful yeah. of each other. Okay. And I think it's definitely one where you lead by example, 100%. You, you ha I, I, every, I have to lead by example. Anybody who's a leader or an authority figure on the group leads by example. So that's the first thing that I was saying on that one. How do I manage it? Um, I mean, you've got the extreme. So from time to time, you'll get people joining who want people because of the nature of the game with finance you'll get people who are joining it just to promote their yeah. promote their uh, dodgy telegram group on which they want people to join to talk about the new cryptocurrency so they they're the people that obviously they're not helpful mm. for the for free speech and for the spread of knowledge and finance and doing that in a fair fashion on the group so they're the people that i uh, well, they, they, they're, I, I asked them to leave basically. Uh, and then after that, after, that's the polite way of putting it. Well, I do, you know, I, I have to be fair. And I, I also want it to be a group where everybody can come and discuss whatever they fancy. And even, and I want there to be as many opinions as possible. So on that note, yeah, all I'll say is, uh, it's very, very, very rare that there is any contravening of the rules and people are by and large, very well behaved. And I think that comes with the territory that we're all dentists, we're all professionals. And from that point of view, we all have an understanding of what it means to be ethical and respectful of each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for, personally for so me- That makes my job easy. To answer your question, that makes my job really yeah, easy. But, but which is good. I, I, I suppose it, 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 it does, but then I think you kind of make it easy for yourself by setting the group up well, um, mm. being very focused, um, attracting the right sort of audience and also nipping things in the bud. You know, if someone's on there self-promoting something and it's not yeah. good news, you, you kind of put it down. And if people don't see that sort of activity taking place in a group, then they know that's not a place where it's going to be acceptable, mm. so they don't kind of try it. Whereas in other groups, you see an awful lot of stuff going on. Personally, I find as an education tool, it's, it's brilliant. I, I, I know very little about Bitcoin, for example. So from an education point mm. of view, it's great. I know... In dental school, because we've had this as a, as a, a beef for many mm. years, in dental school, there's no conversation or discussion about business or money whatsoever. And I get it. I get it because at dental dentist. school, it, it's clinical. However, it's a big missing gap mm. in general knowledge. So from, from your point of view, what are your thoughts about the need for more education about, about money you know, within the profession? All for it, all for it, 110%. And every dentist will empathize with the fact that through going through dental school, there is virtually no mention of money. And it's very much seen as something that we have to deal with when we get into the real world, 110%, almost to the point that we're totally unequipped and unprepared to mm. do. When and it, you can go back when further, can't you? Finds you us. And you can go back to school days. Even in school days, it doesn't get mentioned, does it? So you kind of come out of school with no awareness of money. You then go into dental school, which is going to prepare you to earn quite decent money with no awareness and understanding of money. And then you're set free on the world. Mm. I'm going to use the word taboo. I'm going to use the word taboo. Mm. That's how much of a, that's how much I feel like. Like it is swept under the carpet at dental school. It's almost like you're not allowed to talk about money. Mm. It's like it's a dirty word. Because almost. it may perpetuate the belief that that's... Yeah, all, absolutely. It may perpetuate the belief that that's why you're interested in dentistry, okay? Now, <laughs> I think that we have to have those conversations because when it gets to the point that you eventually are doing well for yourself, it's almost like it's... You almost just find yourself... I use the word inadvertently for how dentists find themselves one day with this paycheck, which is a lot more than what they might've earned during when they were in FD. Yeah. They kind of just inadvertently begin to earn a lot of money one day. Mm. And because their bandwidth is so limited, there's this whole onus on 
how we are expected to be the best clinician, rightly so, because we have to, we should put so much work into that so we can give as best service as we can to our patient. It's almost like after the bandwidth for that side of dentistry, the clinical side being the best professional that you can has been expelled. There's very little left to learn things which seem to be mm. uninteresting and boring, particularly from the outside looking in. My argument would be that when you start to unravel what money is and how it works, I personally think it's fascinating. I personally think that that that, can, that myth can be dispelled if you just begin to learn and read mm. about it. And then once you begin to read and learn and understand what it is, then the whole conversation about how you can manage your finances flows so much better from there. And yes, there isn't much bandwidth. I actually think that it might be worth just creating some bandwidth, if you can, to begin to learn about this. Taking charge of your future mm. via investing, because that's the point of investing. Everybody thinks investing is an offensive thing. Investing is actually a defensive thing. First of all, if you have all your assets remaining in cash, then inflation is going to, it's going to gradually, gradually, gradually ebb away at those. It doesn't matter how much money you earn as a dentist. You can earn 400K a year. You can earn 400 grand. You can retire for a bit. You'll have to come back to dentistry unless mm. you know how to protect yourself against inflation mm. and manage your money. And mm. that is why it's such an important life skill that we should all know about, dentists or not. I think one of the ones that we see, and it is, uh, that resonates so much, is that these young guys, uh, you know, guys and girls, earn big money and then they forget that they have to pay tax, <laughs> you know, in those mm. early few years <laughs> that it's like, oh, I've got a big tax bill to bear because no one's really sort of said, yeah. you've got to put away money for tax. It's a, it seems a really simple thing, but no one's actually but, ever but, told but, them. But going back to that point about, about education, it's not their fault. No, it's right. It's, it's not. not. Yeah, no, nobody explains this stuff, but that's how it works. So, mm. you know, you earn £10,000 a month. Brilliant, I've got £10,000 to spend. And if you keep doing that month after month after month, at the end of the year, when the tax man says, well, you know, you might have to pay me 20, 30, 40,000 pounds, but I've spent it all. Suddenly, you know, you're playing catch up before you start. Is, is there ever, obviously, I, I imagine you get lots of DMs and requests coming from people with quite basic mm. questions. Is there somewhere you send people just to give them a basic understanding of, of, of how to think about money? <laughs> Finance for dummies. You know, like that sort yeah. of like, what is it, windows for dummies yeah. or whatever. There's a book for you. There's <laughs> yeah, well, I, I actually see I'm a, I'm a reader and I like all this knowledge from, well, all this knowledge about investing came from books. And it was a one time obsession that I just used to burn through a book a week on finance and on crypto. I still do read. I still do read a lot, but definitely not to the same level as I did when I was initially getting into it. And there have been some books there that without name dropping any, they put in very simple terms why investing is so important. Mm. And they presume no prior knowledge on finance whatsoever. Those books, there's one book that I can think of, but I won't, I won't, I won't spice it on this podcast. It's a very well-known book. It takes the principles of investing and it applies them to the UK, which actually not many books do. And it puts it in very, very, very simple terms. And I, I defy anyone to read that book and not want to learn more about this and take charge of the mm. finances afterwards, particularly when you learn about the true nature of inflation and what it means for you if you hold all your assets in cash. I was going to say, I think that's a really important one, isn't it? When people forget about the fact of if I've got £100,000 with inflation, by doing absolutely nothing, you know, based on the current inflation rate, it's worth £97,000 in real terms yeah. in a year's time. And then if you still don't do anything, even though you might be adding to the pot, all you're doing is disguising this erosion, whereas you could actually be doing something actively with it. Uh, I think it's a people just forget about it. They think, oh, I've got cash. Um, you know, it's, there's something lovely, isn't it, about cash? And, you know, it's not even like putting it in gold. If you're going to put it in gold, that might go up or put it in something that's an investment. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a, a real interesting one, James, in the fact of it's not, it's a defensive policy, yeah. but also it's a doing thing. It's not just sitting back and thinking, oh, my. It's funny, I've never thought about it in the way that you said it. Before. 
it's, it's a defensive move, not an offensive mm. move. It's it's actually a strategy to give you. It's, a, it's an amazing way. It's an amazing way of phrasing it, isn't it? Right? Because people yeah. all of a sudden they realize that just staying where they are is actually not enough. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's not that you're voyaging out to obtain something. Literally, by the sheer fact that we don't do this, it's something that will be of detriment to us further down the line. Yeah. Mm. On, on one of our earlier episodes, we spoke to Adam Brookbanks, and he's um, a financial planner for dentists, um, part of FJ Wealth. And he laboured the point about compound interest, and he was saying how ridiculously powerful compound interest is. And you know, if you start making investments early on, they'll just keep dripping something in. You know, it builds and builds, and then the bit that gets added to it builds and builds, and it's quite remarkable. But that's obviously quite a a long-term thought process and a long-term strategy. Um, relating it back to the Bitcoin thing, because obviously at the moment that's a real hot topic, because at the time we were recording this, um, in the last week it got through the $60,000 bracket, it got to 66, it's down at 62. It's There's a lot of movement, there's a lot of chatter about it. But that, for lots of people, kind of feels a bit like a high roller type mm. approach to mm. investment. So where do you sit in terms of kind of that long-term strategy against it kind of being sort of a shit or bust type mentality? I love that, okay? And there's so much to unpick and unravel in that question, but here's the crux of it. Most people go in, they want to trade the crypto world, okay? They want to trade it rather than invest in it. Now, for anybody who doesn't know who's listening, the difference between trading and investing is you are an investor if you buy something and you hold it until the point that you are thinking about retirement, and then at that point you withdraw profits. That is an investor, okay? That is the strategy that's probably most suitable for about 95% of people who want to invest their money. And there's a whole host and variety of reasons for that. Time, there will be, well, yeah, mainly it's time. How much, it, how, much, how much you want to spend educating yourself about the space, how much you want to actively monitor it and be a, part, a participant in that. Because to do all those things and do it correctly, you, it takes a fair bit of your time and effort. If you're prepared to do all of those things, then a trader might be something that you're more interested in, in which case you're buying and selling things and you're attempting to take profits on any time frame before mm. you are retired. First of all, have I done a good job of articulating that? Yeah, no, that's that, good. That, that, really does good that sense. make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's the thing. People get into crypto and they think that you have to trade it. And everybody thinks that when the price of Bitcoin fluctuates, they panic and they lose money. Behind the scenes, there are people who intentionally manipulate the price of Bitcoin, as most assets, yeah. as with most assets, actually, which is what people don't realize, to try to flush you and scare you out. Okay. Was that, was it if you buy Bitcoin or something, and you hold it, it for three years, was, 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 wasn't there a. a, a, oh, a well, the well, there you go. Market, market makers. I was going to say, people <clears throat> just played around with the price and suddenly yeah, made a fortune stop. and lots of people lost fortunes. I'll tell you what you've just done for me, James. I'm, don't, I'm an old bloke. So I don't, this cryptocurrency sort of thing, it's like, uh, you know, and I just see people. But what you've just said to me there is the first time it actually makes a bit of sense, really, in the fact of if you're a trader, then you buy and sell. If you're an investor, it's a bit like property. You buy a property and you hold it for 30 years. And what will happen is during that 30 years, you'll make money, lose money, make money, lose money. But the likelihood is at the end of the 30 years, you're going to have made more money than what you started out with. It's, it's yeah. fascinating, I say, because to me, I, I think I've always looked at it as that trading angle. But what you've just said is actually that's that's a little part of it. The rest of it actually is the investment part. That's fascinating. That's brilliant. Brilliant for me. Mindset and time frame are so important. And lots of people go in to the crypto world and they say, oh, I want to buy and hold Bitcoin. But then they also say, actually, I want to take profits at the end of the bull market. So that's a paradox. Mm -hmm. Okay. So having a plan before you get into it and deciding what you're going to do is so helpful. And it turns your paper hands into diamond hands, as they say. I don't know if you guys have heard that expression. No, paper hands that like wouldn't sell when there's the fluctuations because you panic and your hands are, well, they're not made of strong stuff. Diamond hands is when you hold on really firm. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. So that, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, it's, uh, I don't even know if that's like crypto jargon or maybe internet culture investing jargon. But anyway, it's a new one. And it's a new one for some people, I'm sure, who are listening. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, Trading and investing, lots of people try to trade crypto 
But actually, here's the paradigm shift. If we take those really sensible investment strategies, which are proven to work in traditional finance and apply those to the crypto world, one, they're very effective, okay? And two, they are the most suitable means for being involved in the crypto world for most people. It's just unfortunate that trading gets way too much of the airtime and everybody gets the wrong impression, maybe even gets a little bit scared and unwilling to venture into that world because they think that that's all it is. That's my message and that's what's different. If you buy Bitcoin and you hold for three years, one more stat, one more stat, and then I'll stop talking, I promise. If you buy Bitcoin and you hold it for three years and you sell, you don't sell no matter what, there's a 97% chance that you will make money. If you hold it for four years, there's a 100% chance. If you hold stocks, if you go to your FA and you say, how long should I, how long should I wait before I can make money on my ISA or my stocks investment? They will say five years. The reason they say that is because in 2008 to 2013, the financial crash, it took five years for things to recover. Okay, so in that respect, Bitcoin is actually more likely to make you return in a shorter time than stocks. But of course, Bitcoin is still speculative. So mm. we're not going to put our house on it just mm. yet. No, but it's interesting what you say that for 95% of people, they mm. should be thinking about it as an investment, not trading. Not a and, trade. and you're also right. Unfortunately, the bit that makes the news and the bit that gets the headlines, That's because it's, I guess it's more sexy and interesting, is these massive fluctuations. I made 20,000, oh, yeah. I lost 20,000. Exactly. That, 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 that's the bit that kind of catches the news. Yeah. Do, do, so in terms of the, the group that you run, um, we, are, we are massive fans of saying yes to opportunities. If, if, if people come to us with an idea, our instinct is to say yes, and then we kind of flush it out from Fail there. fast. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So when you created the Dentists Who Invest group, are there were there some opportunities that came out of that that you weren't expecting? Are things have things happened as a result of you channeling your your efforts in this area that you never could have foreseen coming down your way? One hundred and ten percent. And this is coming. Can I just put everything I'm about to say in context? Thirteen months ago, Dents to Invest didn't exist, and I thought social media was stupid and pointless. And I thought social media was if you you're want still to right show about off. a lot of that. Honestly, I thought it was. You know what? I thought it was if you wanted to show off because you've been in Marbs and you put the shirt off, <laughs> you put your photos and you put it on Instagram. I thought that's what it was for. All right, and that was. And you know what? Me, that's me holding my hands up saying that I was wrong. Okay, because when you scratch the surface, there's actually so much love on there. There's so many opportunities, and there's so many ways that anyone can serve and help people. Social media just takes your world and puts it out there so that a lot it broadcasts it. That's all it does. Mm. Whatever your intention is, whatever your message is, it just amplifies that. If your message is good and your message is pure and your message is that you want to help people, then social media is just a means of promoting that. That's all it is. The fact that we've got all these connotations about it, they are stereotypes. They are things that we that may be negative that are not necessarily true. And that is... I wish someone would have sat me down and said that 13 months ago. To answer your question about opportunities, heck yes, about a thousand million things that I never could have envisaged have happened to me because I put myself out there. All positive, every single one. People that I, authors of books, there was a, quite a famous author who appeared on the podcast. I was actually pinching myself when that happened. Even the fact that I'm sat here talking to you guys, what an amazing opportunity. Well, I, I, and this I remember that, I remember that. Because that, that, right that, well, that, that, that book got talked about a lot in the group, uh, uh, didn't it? You got, you got yes, talked about it was, an awful yeah. lot. And then as a result of that, you got to speak to the guy, which is brilliant. Yeah, that's it. And that's that's one example of one of the, you know, the amazing things. If you would have said to me, James, 13 months ago, if you would have said, James, you run a program, you help people learn how to navigate the crypto and Bitcoin world. I would have said, no way in heck, there's no way that that's possible, if you know what I mean. But for me now, that's what I do to complement my profession. And I just think that's amazing. I just never would have believed that was possible. And it was all because I opened that door. I started that group. And I really would encourage anyone who's got a passion, anyone who's got an interest, whatever it is, to make, some, make themselves some sort of social media presence, just talking about it. And you know what? Even if it doesn't become this massive thing that people will follow, it's just you putting a little bit of love out there. And there will be somebody somewhere who will reach out to you, That's who, a great you message. Mm-hmm. With, who can help you, who will help you get better at that passion that you have, will help you in some way, or even just get to know you. And it's the whole human side as well. Yeah. I honestly really wish I could have had words myself. 
a, you know, me from the past and said, James, social media can help you if you, if you know how to use it mm. and you have the right mindset. Yeah, I, th- I must admit, when I look at it, I think I'm, I'm, I'm probably more of a observer and occasionally I'll input if there's something that comes up that I think is something I can comment about. But I think it's a fascinating barometer for what people are interested or concerned about because there's some questions that are raised and there's like, you know, four replies and, and it's obviously hasn't really resonated yeah. with the group and then there's other questions it's like <laughs> and it's like yes. oh, flip I'm really <laughs> it, I find it fascinating because it sort of says ah this is obviously something that has that has touched a nerve or is really important to people yeah. so therefore everybody wants to understand and chip in and then there's some other questions and and you know they're really valid questions but either they apply to that person so they're so specific mm. but what they feel which i think is quite interesting is it's a safe group i mean there's lots of uh, i'm not going to mention who and i'm not going to mention where and what i'm going to do however has anyone thought about so and so but there's always someone who says ah have you thought about so and so Mm. check this out go your accountant whatever it might be i think it's a fascinating group it's real time it's real time as well on that on that this is why no matter how basic the question, I f- we I go out of my way to give it oxygen on the group, okay? Mm, yeah. Because there's always going to be someone hyper knowledgeable who can answer that question and help that person, and there'll be lots of people, just like you said, people who are less active followers of the group who will be able to read that, and that will help them in some way. So this is why there has to be as many questions permitted mm. on there as possible. There's no such thing as a silly question, mm. no matter how. Also, James, you're, you're great as admin because I know that you've you've occasionally like you know if if it's appropriate you might tag me to to chip in with a comment, but you're very good at, at, at drawing drawing people into it to to make it a, a community of of people contributing. Yeah, that's and a I contributors, get, isn't and it? I get yeah, what yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, that the reality is that most of us kind of watch most of the time. And we kind of only want to chip in if we feel we can add value. Yeah, yeah. Lots of people feel they want to chip in on everything. I also feel the worry, the shame thing is as well, and I, I don't know how you feel, but you don't want to sort of promote your company, do you? Know, I see something and I think, really, yeah. you, 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 should, you should contact us because actually there was one about, a, I don't know, one about a value or something, some guy. And, and the answer is the value just looked really super low. And um, people are saying, oh, it seems quite low, da, 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 da. And I think I've put in said, well, you just need to get it valued properly. But I think that's the way to do it rather than self-promote oh, yeah, for me because I think it's just, yeah. you sort of don't want to get – it ends up looking like an advertising forum if you're not careful, doesn't it, yeah. I think? Absolutely. That's bang on. And that's the ethos that I try that I encourage as well. That's the ethos that I ensure that the group has. Yeah, yeah. Well, James, I've – I've learned a lot. I've had fun. Um, I think the stuff you're doing is is needed in the profession. I, I think there will be everybody within that group is is learning. And I think if people can learn more about money, then I think that's good for them as individuals. I think it's good for the profession. I think for their families. I, I think there's there's loads of good that comes out of this. Yeah. So from that point of definitely. view, definitely keep doing what you're doing because yeah, it, it's needed. It has a place, and you do it with such such passion and spirit. So, I understand uh, more about Bitcoin. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what, what we do, James, at the end, we always ask our guests uh, a couple of questions uh, just to get a little bit inside their mind. So if you could be a fly on the wall um, with somebody in a, in a certain situation, where, where would you be and, and, and what would that situation be? Oh, that's a great question. That is a great question. Um, I would really like to see what goes on. This is, this is very much a me thing, okay? And this is to satisfy my own curiosity because I've spent so much time reading about it. And there's a lot of theories out there. There's a lot of speculation. I want to see what goes on in the halls of power in the Central Bank of America, the Federal Reserve. I want to know what they're really, the conversations they're really having because there is some weird and wacky theories and there's a lot of conspiracies about who gets to say what, who owns what, et cetera, et cetera. So that's very much a me thing. And that's my answer to that question. No, great one. Great one. And Illuminati. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there we go. Illuminati. Yeah, it's exactly. all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, could, if you could meet anybody, um, fact, fiction, you know, from, from you know, hundreds of years ago or still with us today, who would, you, who would you like to sit down and have a conversation with? I would really, really, really like to meet, I am going to say FDR. 
I really like ah, wow. energy Roosevelt. A little bit of a left field one, okay? Yeah. And again, it's a bit of a finance question. And I want to know about his management of, there was a particular incident, incident where he took America's gold. He basically took the nation's gold and he repossessed it and he made it its own. I'd like to know why that happened, the real reason why. And I'd also like to know a little bit about his management of World War II. But mm. that's just because I've read a lot of history books on it. That's something that's interesting to me. But that's oh, probably great. the most left field answer that you'll get, you ever have, but, and that you might get for a while. I was going to say, I don't think I don't we've had FDR. We haven't had FDR. Well, I don't think yet. many people would know about FDR, to be no, perfectly honest. No, no. <laughs> and I'll, 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 I'll drop you a message. Yeah. If we ever get somebody in the future one, who again, says FDR. Very much a me thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. It should be as well. Yeah, but, well, maybe. You never know. If you, Well... If you do enough of these podcasts, if you do a couple thousand more, then maybe odds are you'll get one at one point. <laughs> but uh, yeah, who knows? That's very, that's, that's very much a me thing. And um, yeah, just just purely because of my interest in history and mm. American history around about that period. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. James, I really appreciate your time. It's been, oh, a, it's it's been, been really a really, really, Thank really you. good conversation. And, and genuinely, the stuff you do, I, I find it really useful. Um, and, and it definitely adds something to the profession. And, and because you're passionate about it, you feel it. Mm. You know, it's something that, that really is within you. So it's, it's, it's really good. And 5,000 members, whatever it is, shows there's a need. 110%. No, it's it's been awesome. I'm like... You know, from my point of view, maybe people don't see this side of me, but I'm pinching myself. You know, I think it's incredible. And I'm just so thrilled that so many people find it useful and valuable. And yeah, and that I get opportunities like this to talk to you guys and have fun on these podcasts. Yeah, no, oh, it's been brilliant. great. We've really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you very much. Lovely, James. Look after yourself. We'll catch up soon. Cheers, mate. Cheers, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. See yeah. you later. Cheers. Cheers. What a fascinating guy. Oh, that's brilliant. Really, good really, really good good I'll tell you what came out for it. And the two things that, that struck me is there's no substitute for passion. Yep. When you're genuinely passionate about something, it, it hits. And I'd never really thought what he said about investing is a defensive thing, not an offensive thing. So you're not doing it as a as a as a push forward. Actually, what mm. you're doing is you're protecting what you've got to make sure that there's growth there, yeah. which is your protection against inflation. Yeah, I mean, for me, I had the uh, the Bitcoin thing. I hadn't really thought about that. You know, you only think about trading, don't you? You don't really yeah. think about investing. But but the the thing that struck me was definitely the defensive thing because I was, in a way, I was thinking if you if you transferred that into your house. Okay, and every year your foundation's reduced by two percent. Yeah, you wouldn't let that go. You, you'd think, oh, I've got true. to do something about that. Yeah. I've got to shore it up. I've got to make sure that it at least remains a hundred percent integrity. And and that's the same with your money. Yeah, if you if you don't genuinely think about the erosion, you are just going to passively erode your spending power. Yeah. And, and and goes back to that defensive thing. You know, yeah. the first thing is not maybe about making loads of money, mm. but it's about not losing money. Mm. Uh, and I agree. I thought I thought uh, it's brilliant. Really and, good. and also I think his group, yeah, you know, we talk a lot about the education of money and the lack of education of money and how even at school days it doesn't get mentioned. And in dental school, it doesn't get mentioned. And yeah, I think James used the word taboo. Yeah, it's always mm. something that, that that they don't want to mention. But it's okay to talk about money. I think actually it's more than okay. I think it's responsible to have mm. conversations so people learn how to manage money. And I think it's really through, important through his his Facebook group, Dentists Who Invest. I, I hope and I certainly learn a lot from mm. it. And I think I'm I like to think I'm reasonably well informed on the money side of things. But there's still stuff that you can learn and pick up from it. Yeah, it's always one of those ones, isn't it? You know, any dentist listening, um, join it. Yeah, you know, you could just be passive, but join it to improve your education because yeah. you are as you said you're almost a bit irresponsible if you don't mm. no really really good episode really enjoyed it no, it's brilliant. thank you for listening to this episode of dentology where we discuss the business of dentistry if you like what you heard please do subscribe where you found this episode that would be amazing and also follow us on instagram